The horse is almost completed. The only thing that is uh, still missing is uh, his cloak. Ah. Here I've already prepared the uh, the inside mm -hmm. to see where we're going. So I want like like a bright red, but uh, not not like all over, mm -hmm. but but dark shadows and uh, nice red highlights. Yeah, and yeah, something like a, a small border around it. Mm -hmm. And this is really like a change of pace for the whole miniature, isn't it? Yes. Um, if you compare it to the horse himself, um, that model is so full of very tiny details. Yeah. Um, a lot of tiny light points. And here we have a huge surface. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, quite a dramatic, um, quite, quite dramatic uh, wrinkles. Mm -hmm. It's really a different topic uh, from the way we work here. I think we will still be using the same brush um, because I think it's good for the people um, to see that you can actually work a whole miniature from the eyes to a uh, massive part like that with the same brush. Mm -hmm. So this is the one from Winsor Newton. That's the long hair, right? Yeah. I mentioned it uh, when we were talking about the red highlights uh, on the face. Um, that red is, um, is a bit difficult to highlight. So never start with uh, the, the pure red and try to highlight it with white or orange, um, but start with a rather dark mix. I will mix some uh, flat red from Modern Color with some black. You can also do like a small gradient on your palette to see if it, if it works like that and if, if the highlight color is good. Mm -hmm. One important consideration for um, the cloak was uh, the level of uh, detail, and uh, when we say detail, we mean freehands <laughs> on here. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, the miniature is already very, very busy because of all of the small details. Definitely. And in, in contrast uh, to that, we uh, decided to uh, be very simple on mm -hmm. the freehand and just do something little that fits the iconog uh, iconography of the, of the horse. So mm -hmm. we have like the, the small arrow, uh, the small arrow and the, the bolt. Yeah, and uh, Simon Egan was kind enough to actually sculpt something there even. <laughs> yeah, so you have the, the uh, horse eye yeah. on the side. And as this is actually part of the outside of the cape, um, you see the, the other eye is right here. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a combination of uh, painting that sculpted on f um, detail and add a little freehand. Here from the gradient on my palette I take something out of the middle and just give it a first layer. Um, by having a colored layer um, underneath and not just the black base color, uh, we have a better foundation for the wet blending mm -hmm. um, because um, Sometimes if, if, if you're not uh, careful enough on the wet blending, the surface underneath might shine through and that is just uh, with less contrast if you have a, like a matching tone underneath. Mm -hmm. For the next step, we will, you always have to keep in mind how the, uh, if you have the, the object separate from the miniature, you always have to keep in mind how it will be placed in the end. So mm -hmm. uh, you, you put the lights in the right direction. So this one will be pretty much like that. So all the upper elements here will be brighter red because yeah. they're gonna hit better light. Um, and I think I will focus here on, on those here to show you how, how the wet blending on a large surface works um, because it's quite nice to see in those. Yeah. So we take um, some of our uh, medium tone uh, right out of the middle of the gradient and um, just wet the surface with that. See, I'm not hitting the, the very top part of the wrinkle here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm taking some lighter color from the top of the gradient on the palette and place it here. Again, the darker color is already dried off a bit, so just adding some new darker color. 
as you can see now on the surface you can really easily mix the color to achieve a gradient mm -hmm. Not as fast as with the airbrush, but it's pretty fast already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the nice thing is you can really uh, go bit by bit and in the end just uh, work with thin glazes to, to correct the, the thing and you can get a really nice smooth finish. Mm -hmm. Let me blow dry that and just to see how it looks when it, once it's dry. Quite nice, so uh, I will do the same step on, on the upper one. As you can see, the consistency of the paint is actually rather thick. Yes. It's not uh, glaze or anything. Turn it upside down to get the right position f to blend the highlight in the other direction. And some shadow color, almost black from down here. Um, we will increase the highlight a bit to get more volume. See, those highlights are yeah. quite, a, quite a bit broader and brighter. Well, plus, this is the outside or the top side of the cloak, uh, while the other side is uh, the underneath. Yeah, well, but as it's uh, exposed like that to, to the sun, ah. you have like the same colors or the, the same highlight colors okay. on, on both sides. Okay, so uh, now just uh, some red in the tip and... Uh, the medium tone on the back of the brush. And some of the pure flat red. the uh, consistency now is that already a glaze or is it still pretty thick no it's it's rather a glaze okay. um, so i'm just uh, trying to soft out the the um, previous highlights mm -hmm. you actually see the uh, satin finish of that paint it's actually kind of uh, it's pretty glossy uh, also yeah. because you applied it very thickly which uh, kind of adds to the glossiness a little bit yeah, plus the the uh, flat red is not as flat as the name suggests. It's, uh, <laughs> it dries off actually quite satin. Mm -hmm. We've chosen the the red with its glossiness on purpose because I think it really nice uh, nicely contrasts to the uh, very uh, matte and sparkly armor. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if you see it together, it works really well. Yeah. Okay, so we continue with some shadow work. Um, I will therefore take some of that dark mix down here and add a tiny bit of uh, dark sea blue. Uh, the nice thing about uh, dark sea blue is um, it dries off very flat and it's nice to have that contrast from the more glossiness uh, in, the, in the original color mm -hmm. and the flatter shadows. And as dark sea blue is uh, not very saturated, um, it also does not really uh, stay as a visible film of blue color. Yeah. But it still has this kind of uh, bluish quality to it, which uh, not only gives a nice contrast now because of the flatness and the versus the, the um, satin uh, glossy finish, but also it is a color contrast, red yeah. and blue. You have to always um, make sure that the highlight matches the size of the, the object and the, the glossiness. Mm -hmm. So that here is just a little bit too tiny. So as the, all the, this is exposed to sunlight, we, you, we just have to broaden it up here. And this is uh, really thin. It looks very strong right now while it's uh, still wet, but as soon as it dries, yeah, it'll blend in with the background a little bit. 
Yeah, it's actually quite amazing how strong it looks while the uh, while the color is still wet. Like this stage, and then once it's dry, it blends in a lot more. Also, see how Ben generally moves the brush uh, into the direction of the highlight because at the end of the brush stroke that's where most of the pigments will accumulate and if you were to move this towards the shadows you're probably gonna get a nasty line like a coffee stain line on the shadows yeah I like the the brightness of that see it matches quite well mm -hmm. with that I would continue these steps on the other parts of cam yeah. because it's really the same and we'll be back once that step is completed. All right. All right, so um, I've continued with the work on the highlights. It's quite a rich, nice red uh, already. We will add some shadows later once we've added the, the freehand work because this way we can also glaze with the shadow tone over the freehands to make them really uh, look like they're stitched on the model. Mm -hmm. You can see I also used some very dark black red to frame this year. Just so I have like a minimal lining in the end when yeah. I add the, the highlight color. I will do that here in this part as well. It's not pure black, it's a really dark red. So I don't have that black line. It gets a little too thick on the, on the red. There's really just very few instances, if any, uh, to use pure black on a finished miniature, right? Yeah. I mean, for stuff like the armor on, of the horse. Sure. Sure, uh, because it's a black armor. Okay, the nice thing about uh, this cloak you have is that you have this very fine border that is sculpted on. Mm -hmm. uh, this here, on the inside, for example, is just painted on, because mm -hmm. there's no border. Um, this here makes makes it quite easy for, for us to, to work with. In addition, we will add something very small here. So, But first, we'll just paint this. We're using the same color that we've used for the gold on the armor. So it's uh, wallow brown and a little bit of black. And we try to just use the side of the tip. Because it's a little raised, it's easier than just painting it on as, as a freehand. Yeah, and a lot of people might be intimidated by miniature like Horus. Um, yes, there's a lot of detail on there. Yes, it's a lot of surfaces to cover. But uh, because it's sculpted so nicely, um, it's also not that hard. Yes, a lot of those details help you to really uh, get a nice finish because you can easily just pick a few out and it already looks good. Yeah. It's really interesting how much uh, the gloss difference is, mm. uh, how strong it is actually. On on the camera, it's even stronger. Mm. But yeah, for the for the next step, because we want that gold to to look really shiny, we add a little bit lighter color. Here, same spot where we had the the highlight in the red, just on the upper side, and add a tiny bit of white. The tip. Yeah, very simple but very effectful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll continue on the on the rest of the uh, the line like that and we'll be back for the eye here and the additional freehand okay all right okay so I've worked my way up to the eye of horse and I just painted it with the base color so far so now adding some highlights on the eye uh, for elements like that it's also important to really think of where the light would hit the the object so here and that.
Okay, and down here it's just a little too thick, so we will cover that with the glaze of a lighter base color. So I will refine also the highlights on the on the iris. No, I I'm just lining the the eye a bit uh, with the black I still have on the on the brush. Mm -hmm. It's really very simple because it's um, completely sculpted on. Yeah. So um, in the next step, we will add just painted on freehands, and the task here is to make them match and work together. I will start with um, um, the same base tone, mm -hmm. but a little bit brighter, maybe. Yeah, a little bit brighter. I think it's a bit sad that the border is not continuing over here. Yeah. So. I like to continue that just with the freehand. Not all the way up, but maybe a bit like that and then ending in an arrowhead. Oh. In the next step, some uh, dark lining around it. To have also that uh, embossed look. So, what's the uh, consistency of the paint right now? It looks very thin. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of thin. Yeah, a little bit thicker than a glaze. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to kind of run the same line ten times because uh, you should be happy enough if you hit it once. <laughs> But it also shouldn't be too thick. Yeah. And you see here, there there is a little mistake in the black line. Yeah. Uh, I'll correct that. Do, do I do that? And you see it mainly because of the gloss difference. Actually, I think if it would be the same glossiness, mm. you would hardly see see a small line like that. So for the next step, lighter base color and a bit white to the tip just a very tiny bit and then to correct it with some red it's a little hard to find a good uh, angle for me to pull the line on the camera mm. Um, because actually if you have like the, the red position, it's a lot easier to draw like one straight line. So of the darker base color again, because this highlight here is a little too broad. Also the here is a little bit bended. Mm. So I think uh, for this stage now it's okay. Uh, I will add the so, some additional lines and uh, maybe some like small balls, lightning balls, uh, here, and then we see if we need to correct that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think the paint is a little too thin. This way I would have to do it again and again and again and. Uh, it's easier if the paint is a little thicker and you just have to do the freehand one or two times. Yeah. I think I want to add another bolt here. Kind of like a mirror image or? 
Um, yeah, I kind of. For the next step, I would uh, already glue the um, this part to the model and see how I can make everything fit together mm -hmm. and how the freehand looks in position because of the tiny highlights. I'm not sure it really uh, works one hundred percent in the in the when once added it to the model. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we'll check that and then we're back for some little shadow. I might also finish the details off cam once I've attached it to the horse. Mm -hmm. When you attach it, one question: um, Will you actually see the connection point? No, um, it's it's really uh, really nicely uh, done. The okay. cut of the miniature is really good. You have overlapping fur here, so uh, it's quite nice and easy also for the painter to just paint this part separately and then glue to the model. You can see I uh, already painted a few of the details here. I really like how that skull pops out with the mm. highlight here, just. Uh, Especially on the really dark background there. Yeah. And it would not be a real Games Workshop product <laughs> if it had the skull. <laughs> yeah, <it's> skull so. <laughs> there are some more on the base, but uh, yeah, I think it's always good to, to uh, have those skulls uh, nicely painted because uh, skulls are always like a little focus point. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really good to work on, on those a little bit more. We start with uh, a brown. Uh, I've added some warm brown, a more fang brown from Games Workshop to the palette. And we'll mix, this, mix it a bit with uh, some of that brown gray tone, the Chardon Granite, mm -hmm. to break it a bit so it's not that uh, saturated. I try not to um, get too much of the brown into the uh, deep is like the eyes and the yeah. nose. We let that dry and then we continue with some highlights. Okay. So again, loaded brush, face tone, highlight to the top of the brush and then just try to place the strongest highlights. A little bit the uh, paint from the lower side of the brush. Try to create like a little nice blending there. Yeah. Yeah, I already know that a lot of people are trying this loaded brush technique from the comments, and. Uh, I think if you practice that, that's really going to speed up your painting, plus give really nice results too. I think we need more light here, because the teeth are still shining out quite a bit. So the front of the, the skull, I think, is, is already fine. Mm -hmm. Now we just really have to take care of the, the side of the, the skull and pay attention on the, to, uh, on the highlight here mm -hmm. to, to connect that and then work a little on the gold or the, the metal uh, emblem here on the, on the forehead. So the, the upper part of uh, that bone here would be really light. And now with darker color, just soft it out a bit. We'll let that dry and then soft it out to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm preparing a little um, glaze that is in between the white from the highlight and the brown that is just next to it. Top highlight. I think my biggest mistake is that I start light, and not uh, dark brown. Ah uh, well, I, I think you can you can uh, easily do it in both sides, but uh, or in both directions, like from light to dark or dark to light, it doesn't actually matter. But you have to really uh, still think of uh, light and shadow on the mm. bones.
I think it would be uh, really nice to have a small crack in the side of the skull. Mm -hmm. I'll take a little bit of the black. The consistency should be really, really fine. Uh, not too strong, not too much paint in the brush. So I don't ruin the, the blending. Next thing would be the uh, small uh, ornament on his head. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will just uh, mix some of that gold color that we've used all over the model. Mm -hmm. So, the medium base tone. Oh, yeah, now you can really see the structure. Was before, before it was a little, little hard to see. Yeah. And some white to the tip. And you can see how easy it is to actually make this look like gold on such small details. Yeah. Really a strong highlight and you're almost there. I think a little highlight here on the side, so yeah. you can really see that. It's a really good eye catcher on the back. I really like it. It works well together with the glossy red and the, the flat skulls and the uh, contrast between the dark background and the yeah. light skulls. Yeah. Earlier we said that uh, we will uh, later on readjust the shadows mm -hmm. uh, over the over the whole thing. We'll do that just with a thin glaze uh, of um, black and a little bit of blue, especially on small elements like those small wrinkles here. Mm -hmm. I think that could make a nice difference as well. There's already a, s a slight highlight on the lower part, if I see this correctly. Yeah. And it's because of the satin effect, it's not really that visible. Yeah. And now you're going to just put the uh, shadows on the upper part of the wrinkles, right? It will not be the deepest point that will be right. the darkest, but uh, just the, the lower side here mm -hmm. of those. And as the glaze is very thin, it's okay to also cover the the golden elements. You can uh, see in here when blowing on the glaze just to make it uh, make the liquids evaporate and make it dry faster. Yeah, and I don't want to use the blow, blow dryer because it's quite delicate work at the moment. I'll continue with a wash on the shadow area. Here also covering the the border here. This is really thin. Yeah. But um I mean the the, the cloak at that point or at that part is already very dark. The um borderline um is not. And that's why the border will pick it up much more than the underlying um Plus, plus, it's a lot flatter, so it mm -hmm. soaks in more pigments and water. Yeah. And the clean brush. Feather it out to the sides. It looks kind of dangerous, uh, but it's not because it's so thin. It's really almost impossible to mess anything up in one one stroke right now. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm very happy with uh, with almost every part. Um, I'm not really happy with that here. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks a bit bended, with uh, weird. So uh, we, I want to correct that before I glue the miniature to the base mm -hmm. uh, for the f uh, for the final adjustments. But once glued to the base, I think it's quite hard to to reach everything. Yeah, especially so. for like fine lines like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the highlight came out a little too strong, too far. Much, much better. Okay, perfect. So um, we'll glue the figure to the base. 
and uh, show you the thing together. Um, and then we'll uh, be ready for the final adjustments. Yep, awesome.